Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. We have the feast of the Immaculate Heart following directly that of the Sacred Heart of her Divine Son. The two hearts are one. And it is that one cannot be comfortable if one ponders deeply on a church situation in which, along with the Son, the Mother is not honoured. That is what gradually came to me when still a Baptist. It was actually when reading the story of Fatima that I realised that there was something missing and that one could not comfortably be in a Baptist prayer group and a Baptist culture and deliberately place in obscurity the Holy Mother. It was a big part of the family, hugely missing. Now, with regard to this feast, it encourages us to look into ourselves and to ask, as the conic does, for a grace of interiority in the form of a temple, well cared for and worthy of, precisely, the Divine Son. We know from many messages given to honey mystics over the centuries that there are certain ingredients to an inner temple well looked after. One is recollection. A holy mystic was writing in the 1930s, Blessed Consolata Petrone, and giving testimony in her writings to what the Lord directly had asked of her, an interior temple made of calm, and he gave her a whole teaching on this, not tolerating one disturbance, indicating that it was rather like a pond. If the pond was crystal clear, one could see through it, and things could be seen clearly. If it was made muddy by much movement, then one could not see through it. And so too his voice could not be heard in the soul, but was troubled. Around about the same time, we have the same teaching being given to St. Faustina. Strive to live, to live in recollection in such a way as to be able to hear my voice. It is so tenuous that only those who live in recollection are able to hear it. And he goes on elsewhere to the same saint in such a way that she is given also a similar teaching. Only this time, on another parallel element, it's the outworking of it in what comes out of the heart through the mouth. The Lord, she says in her diary, gave me to know how much a soul that talks too much is displeasing to him. In such a soul I do not find rest. Now we see here 
the parallel. To talk a lot is to muddy the interior. And if we look at what we're doing when we're talking, we're going from the interior to the exterior and we're losing our interiority oftentimes. And we're also troubling that crystal clear lake of interiority in which we can see and hear clearly. And therefore to do that a lot is to be our own worst enemy with regard to the interior life. And all the authors would go in that direction. In his maxims, St John of the Cross clearly says that to be a great talker is to be not an interior soul. Continual noise tires me and in that noise the soul does not distinguish my voice. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, who saw much of the life of our Blessed Lady, saw that in the Holy Family there was not much noise. They understood each other. I remember hearing this in one Partage d'Evangile at La Trappe with regard to the Holy Family and Nazareth. C'était la première trappe. It was the first trappe. Silence is the language of the interior soul. And if we do not hear it, we do not hear interiority. In questa festa, guardiamo verso il cuore, il cuore della Madonna, che servava tutte queste cose e meditava il loro senso. Era un'anima interiorizzata. Il Signore ha dato nei secoli un insegnamento a tanti anime, a tanti anime mistiche su questo punto dell'interiorità che si trova nel raccoglimento e nel silenzio. San Giovanni della Croce ne parla chiaramente nei suoi massimi, dice così che essere un gran parlatore, un grand parleur, e essere un'anima incapace di vita interiore. La gran mistica Fabiata Beara, consolata Betrone, fu un gran autore femminile su questo punto, di dare un insegnamento da parte del Signore sul coltivare questo elemento di calmo, di interiorità tranquilla, di vita non offuscata nel suo profondo, perché il Signore desidera questa tranquillità profonda, non turbata, per essere percepito. Mi ha dato lo stesso insegnamento anche a Santa Faustina, che posso citare qui, Procura, dice Gesù stesso alla Santa, di vivere nel raccoglimento in modo da poter udire la mia voce. Essa è tanto sommessa che possono udirla solo le anime che vivono nel raccoglimento. Poi ha fatto capire il legame tra questa interiorità tranquilla e la sua espressione. Il Signore mi ha fatto conoscere, dice lei, quanto non gli piace un'anima che parla troppo. In una tale anima non trovo riposo. Il chiasso 
continuo mi stanca e in quel chiasso l'anima non distingue la mia voce la piatta anche di aver visto la vita di Nazareth e ha dato testimonianza che lì si parlava poco ma che si capiva perfettamente mi ricordo di questa parola durante un partage di Vangelo alla trappa in noviziato che Nazareth era la prima trappa la ragione per cui lo Spirito Santo ha sempre guidato i monasteri verso l'osservanza di un silenzio tranquillo e che è il luogo che dovrebbe favorire l'incontro perché il Tempio esterno ci ha invita il Tempio interno che siamo noi, l'anima nostra a essere come l'esterno un chiasso in chiostro e un nemico anche del Tempio dell'anima e per questo lo deve rendersi conto che il silenzio è sempre l'elemento fragile e che va protetto se vogliamo mantenere quello per cui siamo qui, amare colui che si percepisce solo nel silenzio. A solemn act of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, written by Pope Pius XII. Most Holy Virgin Mary, tender Mother of Men, to fulfill the desires of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the request of the Vicar of your Son on earth, We consecrate ourselves and our families to your sorrowful and immaculate heart, O Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, and we recommend to you all the people of our country and all the world. Please accept our consecration, dearest Mother, and use us as you wish to accomplish your designs in the world. O sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary and Queen of the World, rule over us, together with the Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ our King. Save us from the spreading flood of modern paganism. Kindle in our hearts and homes the love of purity, the practice of a virtuous life, an ardent zeal for souls, and a desire to pray the Rosary more faithfully. We come with confidence to you, O Throne of Grace and Mother of Fair Love. Inflame us with the same divine fire which inflamed your own sorrowful and immaculate heart. Make our hearts and homes your shrine, and through us make the heart of Jesus together with your rule, triumph in every heart and home. Amen.
Sora, tu la speranza.